I don't know if you know much about fuzzy logic. Most people know about neural networks. Uh, fuzzy logic could be better in the sense that it's more explainable. You actually can see what is it doing, how it's how it's uh, making decisions. The neural networks, well, depends on the complexity of it. Uh, not so much explainable. So we currently trying to get the fuzzy logic example up and running again, but we thinking how to do it. Uh, originally, it was a simple example of uh, various uh, simple shapes uh, detector. Um, those were time series uh, waveforms, but then we thought we might as well do it more, a little bit more useful. Uh, so we tried applying it to synthetic EEG that has a seizure in it. Um, we do have some uh, real EEG data that we are working with, uh, so we could apply it to that and uh, maybe at a later stage. Uh, synthetic signals are always good because you know exactly what's going on with them. But, and because we're working with ECG data as well, and we uh, one of the tools that we have on the side that was quite popular is this uh, ECG game. We will use that one to develop a fuzzy logic and neural network application that will essentially play the game and do detections uh, for you or against you. <laughs> so it would be interesting so you could see how well you're performing against the bot. So we're doing a waveform, so generally we're doing waveform detection using AI, uh, looking at the signal abnormalities and the noise. We're using fuzzy logic uh, and or neural networks. Uh, obviously interested in data visualization. Currently for this application, we are using Flask, a NumPy, SciPy, and SKFuzzy, which is the fuzzy logic toolkit for Python. Probably know about the other ones already. If no, if not, there's a lot of other content on YouTube that will cover those. We would like to continue development and give a quick uh, summary of the changes to the code that we made. We've been focusing on developing a system for ECG waveform analysis, particularly detecting abnormalities and handling signal noise. Fuzzy logic, neural nets. We discussed the implementation of fuzzy logic in your system. This involved debugging and refining the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function in your Flask application to correctly process ECG data and calculate fuzzy logic outputs. Data visualization. While we haven't directly worked on visualization in this conversation, your project involves visualizing ECG waveforms and the results of the analysis, likely using tools like Flask and JavaScript for web-based interaction. Flask, NumPy, Skippy, Skyfuzzy. Flask, we focused on the Flask backend, particularly on routes handling ECG data processing and analysis. NumPy and Skippy discussed their usage for processing ECG data, including Fourier transforms for frequency analysis and peak detection. Scale fuzzy addressed issues in implementing fuzzy logic using scikit fuzzy, particularly in handling membership value calculations. GPT-4 and GitHub Copilot briefly compared their uses in coding. GPT-4, Chat GPT, is ideal for explanations and understanding concepts, while GitHub Copilot excels in real-time coding assistance within an IDE. Key code changes made. Frequency calculation suggested modifications to the frequency analysis part of your code to correctly identify the dominant frequency from ECG data. Peak count logic advised on adjusting the peak detection logic to align with your project specific requirements, e.g., counting positive and negative peaks. Troubleshooting fuzzy logic offered solutions to fix issues in your fuzzy logic analysis, including correctly extracting and serializing membership values and handling cases where fuzzy rules might not be triggered. Yes, we actually haven't implemented the, the changes for the problem that frequency is always showing zero at the moment. Sampling rate is a good question. Can you look at the waveforms JS and tell me what the sampling rate is? I'm pretty sure I'm already doing FFT frequency analysis. So what are the changes I need to make that it's uh, to make sure it's not uh, showing zero all the time? Now, 
regards the normalizing the peak counts so yeah it sounds good that we have uh, them split into positive and uh, negative peaks code change python copy code of something underscore rate equals hash define this based on your data's time intervals frequencies equals np dot fft fft for q len np underscore data d equals one sampling underscore rate dominant underscore frequency equals abs frequencies np dot abs np dot fft dot fft np underscore data argmax separate positive and negative peaks use skippy signal find underscore peaks for positive peaks and the same function on the inverted data np underscore data for negative peaks direct use if specific numbers of peaks are expected e.g. three positive one negative compare directly with these expected values instead of normalizing yes it seems like you're detecting both positive and negative peaks that's correct you're not using those values now i don't want to add them together i don't want to add them together i want to use them separately because they are important okay for the number of positive and negative peaks considering normal ecg waveform waveform how many of them they should be in a normal ecg waveform a single q r s p q r s d complex in a normal ecg waveform which typically represents one heartbeat the key components are the p wave q r s complex and t wave here's a breakdown of the peaks p wave represents atrial depolarization it's a small positive peak QRS complex reflects ventricular depolarization. It usually consists of a small negative deflection, Q, a large positive deflection, R, and then another negative deflection, S. T wave indicates ventricular repolarization. It's a positive peak. So, in a typical normal ECG waveform for one cardiac cycle, a single PQRS T complex, you should expect positive peaks, 2, P wave, and T wave. Negative peaks, 2, Q, and S waves in the QRS complex. The R wave is a larger positive peak within the QRS complex. Keep in mind that variations can exist in different individuals and under different physiological conditions, but the above describes a standard normal ECG waveform. Well, right, so how would you suggest uh, changing that uh, picture processing by the fuzzy logic detector? The detector meant to give uh, higher probability for a abnormal EEG so it has uh, abnormality unlikely possible or likely options to adjust the fuzzy logic detector in your system to give a higher probability of detecting abnormal ECGs you should focus on tweaking the fuzzy rules based on the ECG features you're analyzing namely frequency amplitude and peaks since we've identified the standard peak pattern in a normal ECG two positive and two negative peaks, you can use this information to refine your rules. Here's a suggested approach. Define new antecedent for peak pattern. Create a new antecedent in your fuzzy logic system that represents the deviation from the normal peak pattern. This antecedent can have a numerical value based on how much the detected peak pattern deviates from the normal, two positive, two negative. Adjust existing rules. Modify your existing fuzzy rules to incorporate this new antecedent. For example, you can create a rule that states if the peak pattern deviates significantly from the normal, then the likelihood of abnormality is high. Fine-tune membership functions. Adjust the membership functions for the new antecedent to accurately reflect the degree of deviation from a normal ECG pattern. Likely abnormal. If the peak pattern deviation is high, or if there are significant anomalies in frequency or amplitude, then abnormality is likely. Possibly abnormal. If there are moderate deviations in peak pattern, frequency, or amplitude, then abnormality is possible. Unlikely abnormal. If all parameters are close to normal, then abnormality is unlikely. Implement and test. After updating the rules and membership functions, implement these changes in your system and test with various ECG data to see how effectively it identifies abnormalities. By making these adjustments, your fuzzy logic system should be better equipped to identify abnormal ECG waveforms, especially those that deviate from the typical peak pattern. Remember, the effectiveness of this approach largely depends on the accuracy of your peak detection and the precision of your fuzzy membership functions and rules. Okay, so it's like uh, giving me um, prompts for GitHub Copilot to change the code or something. Or at least that's how we could use it. Um, current problem. Yeah, we need to change process data to to look at both uh, positive and negative peaks. 
instead of just the overall number of pigs. So let's do that. I forgot to change those globals. So this will be the same. Then we have the amplitude frequency should be the same. Mean peaks, right? So this bit it changes, and uh, yes, yeah, so this normalized uh, values will have to change as well, uh, specifically for the peaks normalized. Uh, it's this line there, right? It's not being currently used. Yeah, the whole return will change. Let's do that. So now we don't have any errors uh, that the uh, linter is showing. That's great. Can actually run. I forgot to run the application just to show you how it looks like. Yeah. So again, you have those ECG waveforms, uh, individual BQRSD complexes scrolling through the window, and some of them are normal, some are abnormal, and you need to click on the abnormal ones. If I click on normal one, I get a false alarm. If I do not click on abnormal one, I get a miss. This is normal. I click on it, so I get a, a, a false alarm. Then correct rejection. Yeah, this one I do not click on. Get another correct rejection. Another normal. Another correct rejection. This is abnormal. It's missing one of the peaks and so on and so forth abnormal as well and once you get to 50 points it starts uh, going uh, faster which by the way the bot should absolutely not care about so this is uh, definitely where human will fail or start failing as soon as the, the waveforms are scrolling too fast on the screen there's a video of me reaching thousand points that's the maximum i can do uh, go check it out see if you can do any better it's on the website now uh, this is what we adding in the current change we have this analysis of a fuzzy logic potentially later we'll add another column for neural uh, network analysis yeah i just uh, realized are you sure about the two positive and two negative peaks in a P Q R S T complex? I apologize for the confusion earlier. Let me clarify the typical peaks in a standard PQRST complex of an ECG waveform. P wave, one positive peak, atrial depolarization. Q wave, a small negative deflection, not always present. R wave, a large positive peak. S wave, a negative deflection following the R wave. T wave, one positive peak, ventricular repolarization. So, in a typical normal ECG waveform for one cardiac cycle, a single PQRST complex, you should expect. Positive peaks, generally, two positive peaks, P wave and T wave. The R wave in the QRS complex is also positive but is part of the same complex. Negative peaks, one or two depending on whether the Q wave is present and visible. The S wave is typically negative. The exact appearance can vary depending on individual heart conditions and the lead configuration of the ECG. However, this is a general guideline for a normal ECG waveform. Uh, okay, so shouldn't there be five of them? So if we have a normal ECG coming through, that's not normal. Uh, that's actually a difficult one to detect. Yeah, this one. This is a normal ECG and it has one, two, three, four. P. Right, Q. This one doesn't have the Q. R, S, T. The R is normally negative as well. So we should be two negatives and three positives that would be like a textbook this is not a textbook uh pqrst complex this image for example is missing the negative q 
deflection. So ideally, the there should be three positives and two negatives. Uh, how do we adjust the fuzzy membership functions to for this to work? When it's thinking for long like this, it's not a good sign. Yeah, we still have fix. Oops, instead of uh, splitting them up. Just Correct. To... A typical ECGP QRST complex consists of a P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. The QRS complex itself typically has a Q wave, negative, an R wave, positive, and an S wave, negative. The P wave and T wave are usually positive. In the image you've shown, the Q wave is not visible, which can sometimes occur in normal ECGs depending on lead placement and individual variation. However, for the sake of setting up fuzzy logic for detecting abnormalities, we can assume a standard ECG should have three positive peaks, P wave, R wave, and T wave. Two negative peaks, Q wave and S wave. To adjust the fuzzy logic to account for the possibility of missing Q waves or other abnormalities, you can set up your membership functions and rules as follows. Membership functions for peaks. You can define membership functions for the count of positive and negative peaks. For example, positive peaks, T. Positive peaks, too few, could be 0 or 1. Normal, could be 2 or 3. Too many, could be 4 or more. If the count of positive peaks is, too few, or, too many, then abnormality is, likely. If the count of negative peaks is, too few, or, too many, then abnormality is, likely. If the count of positive peaks is, normal, but the count of negative peaks is, too few, then abnormality is, possible, accounting for the missing Q wave. If both positive and negative peaks are, normal, then abnormality is, unlikely. Here's an example of how you might define one of these rules in a fuzzy logic system. Ensure that your membership functions are well calibrated to the data you're analyzing, and the rules reflect the medical knowledge of ECG interpretation. Also, consider individual variability in the context of the measurement when setting up these definitions. Testing with a diverse set of ECG data will be critical to fine-tuning the system's accuracy. To still solve this problem, technical issue. So in analyze waveform function in our game logic JavaScript. Uh, yeah, we send a post request, that's correct. The 61 peaks. How about all words? There's still 25. Okay. Yeah, can we split it into the negative and positive peaks separately? And can you actually generate the relevant code? I trust you. Yep. Well, not really, but uh, <laughs> maybe this uh, prompt will help. Certainly. To adjust the fuzzy logic detector to consider positive and negative peaks separately, you need to define membership functions for the count of positive and negative peaks separately. Create rules that consider these counts to assess the likelihood of abnormality. Here's how you can define the fuzzy sets and rules. Right, so breaking the overall number of peaks to positive and negative. Let's close uh, chat the uh, copilot for a sec and comment this out. Uh, comment that out. Give me the number of the numbers. And what's abnormality again? Let's do abnormality quickly. Membership functions for abnormality is the same as before. This code assumes a standard ECG with three positive peaks, including the R wave, and one or two negative peaks, Q and S waves. The membership functions and rules should be adjusted based on the actual ECG data you're analyzing. Make sure to test and refine these based on real-world data for the best results. Yeah, we have synthetic, but uh, it's okay. We are using synthetic ECG uh, for now. Testing the real ECG data will be another Flask application, another tool. What else? We're still implementing this. Let's go over it again. We have positive peaks, negative peaks. We got rid of the overall number of peaks. Now we actually need to use those negative and positive peaks. Too few, too many. Normal. Sounds good. And check the actual numbers in a sec. 
and we have the abnormality a likelihood so unlikely possible likely those numbers remain the same yeah they might need adjustment later now we have these rules yeah we need to get our rules correctly uh, so we have uh, rules based on positive and negative peaks too many too few uh, we don't need this one anymore it should be rule five it's looking at the uh, frequency amplitude and more rules as needed can suggesting rule seven okay let's take it let's suggest more if i just okay it does medium medium it's not a great rule but uh, we'll keep going no okay so we have till so far there's some problem in the code right we have abnormality control create control system with these rules just go remove this one for a sec and just have that comment as a prompt right it's doing rule one two seven it's calling a different variable which should be fine and then control system simulation abnormality analysis don't why is it calling it the same um, name but it looks legit and we have all the one to seven rules one to four being rules related to the number of positive and negative peaks and rules five six seven are related to frequency and amplitude obviously this is and and or then we have I don't have this bit do we multi analysis compute input process data into the control system um it's about that computers there and okay let's print this yeah i'm not sure about that line check it out for a sec and pop it in here this thing is actually called the multi analysis to use the system you will input the number of positive and negative peaks detected in your ecg signal here's how to simulate with example inputs don't need it for now we have peaks membership uh, that's still a problem let's check and copilot for a sec uh, peaks is not defined so to fix this should uh, define peaks do we need it we did split peaks into two separate variables uh, the number of positive peaks and the number of negative peaks so we don't need the peaks any uh, where variable anymore in theory uh, here is an updated app by script uh, can you detect any problems with it so the whole the whole code remove that last prompt the provided app.py script appears to be set up for processing ecg waveform data and analyzing it using fuzzy logic here are some observations and potential areas that may need attention frequency analysis the the dominant underscore frequency is being calculated as the index of the maximum value from the fft result this might not represent the actual frequency you should calculate the frequency values and then find the dominant one peak detection positive and negative peaks are detected correctly ensure the detected peaks correspond to the ecg components p q r s t waves global min max variables you're maintaining global min max for normalization purposes ensure they're updated correctly across requests as flask threaded nature might cause unexpected behavior normalization function the normalization function looks correct but you must ensure that max underscore val is not equal to min underscore val to prevent division by zero fuzzy logic rules you have defined rules for both positive and negative peak counts which is good However, you have a placeholder for peaks in the input, which should be updated to use positive underscore peaks and negative underscore peaks accordingly. The rules are combining the fuzzy sets with or, for, likely, and, and, for, possible, and, unlikely. 
Ensure these logical operators align with your system's design intentions. Ensure you are using the correct method to extract the fuzzy membership values. The current method using fuzz interp underscore membership is appropriate for getting the membership grade for a single value. Before sending the JSON response, you are converting the NumPy types to native Python types, which is necessary to avoid serialization issues. Proper error handling is implemented, which is good for debugging and catching unexpected issues. Here's a suggested change for the frequency calculation part. Ensure that you test the application thoroughly after making changes to verify the correct functionality. Also, it would be wise to handle cases where the FFT might return zero or near zero frequencies to ensure the frequency value makes sense in the context of an ECG. Do we have this functional? Wait, let's uh, fix the peaks a bit first. Yeah, we have frequency, temperature peaks, so then normalize once. Then you should update the peaks membership dictionary, positive peaks membership and negative peaks membership. We have two returns. First one is okay, the second one isn't. We have results, frequency, amplitude. That looks legit. Still have peaks somewhere. Still have the same error. Converting numpy to integer. Yeah, that's working. Not displaying anything. Why? It's a um, case sensitive thingy. Do the rule five, six, seven. Seem to work. FIK logic. Just make a quick uh, overview. Next week we will fix uh, these uh, values, which is the output of the fuzzy logic analysis. We do have the uh, values uh, working okay, but then it's just not being displayed properly on the front panel. Uh, abnormality point A, let's see if it's actually correct or not. So this is abnormal, uh, yeah, abnormal EG. Once it passes, it's abnormality point 8. This one normal ECG. And it says abnormality 0.5. This one here, 0.8 again. This one will be harder to detect. Yeah, it's always showing 0.8 or oh, abnormal. I think it's abnormal again. Well, and uh, this is a normal ECG and showing abnormality rate. Uh, that was wrong. Seemed to be delayed by one. The doing that was abnormal. 0.8 and then normal should go to 0.5 yes abnormal 0.8 normal 0.5 so it works <laughs> more more or less this is normal again we'll go to 0.5 so that's the probability or not to check that uh, okay something is wrong so that's normal the stack and this is how the decision is actually being made. So for 4.8, we have positive. Ooh, it's still normalizing the number of positive peaks. It's no good, no good, no good. We'll fix this next time. It should be a fairly straightforward fix. The website is available for you to play with. The current ECG games just over there can access it from the front page of the website bionicchaos.com and uh, you can play with it manually and hopefully this tool which is a robot playing this ECG game will be available for you to try out uh, sometime soon so you know what to do like subscribe I most care about actual meaningful comments uh, so if you have any suggestions, requests, uh, screaming at me for doing something wrong, please do let me know. I'll see you next time. Bye.